Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so very much for joining us this evening. I'm excited that you're here. I'm one of your hosts, of course. I'm James Howard. I'm Regina Howard. And again, we're glad that you all have taken the time to tune in tonight. It is our prayer that something may be said, a song may be sung that will bless your life in an incredible way. Yeah. We want you to stay tuned. Don't forget that you can also call in. Our prayer partners are standing by right now to hear from you. They'll join their faith with your and together you can bombard heaven by calling 770-300-9828. As always, you know it's not about us, but it's about God. It's about motivating, encouraging, and uplifting you, our viewers. Amen. We're going to have a great show for you to even this evening. Excuse me. We have some awesome artists. Yes, we do. Um, been singing for a long time. National yes, Recording have. Artists are joining us this evening. Uh, they're going to minister to you as well as we have a pastor here and she's going to talk about if you're trying to start a church or if you're thinking about going into leadership, uh, she's here to talk about capacity. It's called CAP and they're going to talk about what it means, church planning, church planning how to start where to go and what direction to go. So I'm excited about that. I am too. You need to know the particulars when you're starting a ministry. Yes. You need to know that it's not just jumping up off of your knees and saying, saying, I am called, I am going, and then just go and try to secure a building or a school or anything. It takes more than that. Yeah. And then we have a, 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 a doctor that's here, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about fellowshipping as women, yeah. uh, supporting you as you go out into, into ministry. And then we're grateful for our artist tonight, Brother Terrence Cotton. Yep and Sister Monica Lisa Stevenson. <laughs> She's here tonight, and, and they're going to bless us in an incredible way. You know, I'm, a, I'm I just am amazed at what God has been doing in the lives of the believers. So I want you to stay there, bring everybody around, of yeah. course. If you're done at the dinner table, we're going to have a great time. We want you to stay there. Don't go anywhere. Don't forget, the number at the bottom of the screen, 770-300-9828 is the number to call or call toll-free, 1-800-810-5950. Right now, we're going to take you to the music ministry. Terrence Cotton is singing Celebrate. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. The Lord. the Lord, come on and celebrate, celebrate his, holy his holy name. name.
Amen. Amen. How many people want to celebrate the goodness of Jesus Christ? Yes, I do. Amen. I do every day. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I'm grateful for everything that he does. Amen. You have to be. Yes, yes. That was the music ministry of Minister Terrence Cotton. He'll be joining us a little bit later in the broadcast. Amen. He's bringing it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's good. It's good. I was just thinking in my head and as we prepare to introduce our next guest that when he said celebrate, I was just thinking how the seasoned saints used to tell us growing up that thank you makes room for more. Yes, yes. So when you thank God, you celebrate him for all that he, he does for you. And that lets him know that he can continue to do more because yes, you're grateful. Yes, yes. Our next guest, I'm sure, can tell you a lot about being grateful mm. and she can share insight and wisdom as it is her mission to encourage, inspire, educate, and love others. Um, she helps others to recognize the greatness that is within them and help give them life or help to find out what their life's purpose is. Dr. Daisy Jones is here with us this evening, Amen. and we're just going to talk to her a little bit about that. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you you're so welcome. much for inviting me here. You're it's, and you're so right about that song. We have to celebrate mm. who we are mm. purpose to be. Mm. Yes. Life sometimes make you think you have no reason to celebrate. Yeah. Right. Right. Because they beat you down with what all happened to you. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. bad things and, and you not big enough, you this, that. But we were born to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And you said that about being thankful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we are thankful for who God has purposed us to be, we can freely celebrate mm -hmm. because it's, it's the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That is our strength. It is Amen. our strength. So for me, when I was given the charge to help people look at yourself, when you look at yourself in the mirror, first of all, the thing for you to do is be thankful mm -hmm. that you're here. Mm -hmm. Be thankful that God has allowed you to wake up another day. It, it doesn't matter about what you've gone through, right? how bad it is. You should be thankful and celebrate that you're still breathing. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's, That's Amen. a reason to celebrate. Yes, it is. And, and you're breathing when you realize what it is that God has given you. Because all you have to do is, is wake up in the morning mm -hmm. and look into that mirror mm -hmm. and ask him, not, not anybody else, <laughs> because he's the only one that actually created you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's the only one that really has control over your life. Mm -hmm. So if you ask him, look into your own eyes, not at your face or none of that, but look into the, your eyes because the eyes is what everybody knows. It's the window to your soul. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you truly look into your own eyes and ask him, God, what is it that you would have me to do? He's going to tell you because he has your best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. So when he told me, to form a partnership of women. Mm -hmm. Me, Daisy, I said, uh, it's too many of these women conferences going on as it is. They, you, they got them, they run in and run out, and they stay the same way. They wait year <laughs> after year. They run in, they run out, and they stay the same way. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to do that. Right. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. He said, I didn't tell you to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is truly listening. And he, he said, because what I need you to do is help the, the, the female counterparts in life, because there's only two, but I need you to help the females understand mm -hmm. that there's a difference between a female and a woman. Mm. Mm. Come on. Mm. Because of the state of the world today, we all have to stand up and, you know, I was talking about somebody got to do something, somebody need to do something, you know. Well, that's what you were born to do something. The somebody is you because you have a body. Mm -hmm. And you have a call because you're still breathing. Mm -hmm. So the Queen of Sheba group was, and then when he gave me that, I said, well, no, the Queen of Sheba, she went and slept with David and had a baby out of wedlock and all of this. That's not a good representation of a woman. And he said, listen to me. What human being and a woman, since you are one, mm -hmm. 
has been 100% righteous from the day they were born. No one. No one. You see, because it, it, through the things that you go through, it strengthens you mm -hmm. right. and it matures you. And so I, he said, go read what Queen, Queen, the, about Queen of Sheba. Mm -hmm. So when I read it and found out this was the richest woman in the world mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. and according to a lot of the scholars, if you add up what she had, she would still be the richest woman, I mean, richer than Oprah. But anyway, just, mm -hmm. to, just to say, and uh, I know I only got a few minutes, but I need to get this out that um, she had treasures mm -hmm. and she was over a whole country of people. She took her treasures when she figured out, I'm going to talk to the man with the most, Solomon. Mm -hmm. And on her trip to him, she took him treasures too because you don't go without getting something. You don't go to get something without giving. Right. And so that's what it is. It's all about women coming together that have something, that have been through something, and know the value of what life really is, and to give back into that and help them glean what it is that they need to know in order to make the world a better place. Mm. So in doing this, and God calling you to this, how has it impacted your own life? Because it's certain, certainly, there is not anything that we, that God calls us to do that is going to impact others that we find that does not even impact us in a, some sort of a way. Because that's what, that's what made me do it, because of things that happened in my life mm -hmm. that I have realized mm -hmm. and have gone through and lived through and really, really knew that out of all that goes on in my life, there's only one person that I can really go to mm -hmm. okay. that will help me see where I went wrong, because a lot of times we make mistakes. Right. We make bad choices. Mm -hmm. But we have to realize a bad choice, ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. and then move on and learn to be a better person from it. Mm -hmm. From it. Because mm -hmm. everybody makes mistakes. So you never should let anybody uh, say, you know, you, you know, you all, you think you all that, uh, well, I do think I'm something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm working so hard to be the best that I can mm -hmm. be who I'm supposed to. And I can only do that if I go to the creator that would give me instruction on how to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, do you have any type of further education to help the women along? And if you do, what do you do to help the women so they can help other women? Well, we have what we call gatherings. Okay. okay. Matter of fact, we have a gathering coming up. And it is, uh, all of our teachings are actually biblically based because mm -hmm. no matter what people say, the Bible is actually the, the oldest book in the Bible, is, the oldest book in the world is the Bible because it, it chronologizes life within itself from the beginning before we were ever born. So there are steps that we need to take. There are signs that we really need. You know, it's like going to school when you, you get your math book your, and you learn mm -hmm. how to apply that mm -hmm. to your life because mm -hmm. when you learn math, you learn one and one is two, so the, you, that, that's, that's good for you. Because mm -hmm. the more money you make, you gotta know how to count it. Mm -hmm. right. So you have to learn it. So we have gatherings, but we also have one-on-one -on -one sessions. Okay. It's not just predicated to conferences because every day is a day you live. Mm -hmm. So we have um, gatherings, maybe just two or three come together. We share, we bear each other's burdens and we help each other through hard times and, and do that. But we have quarterly gatherings that we all come together and we pour into each other. Okay. We, we, you know, we feed each other through our learnings, but we also feed each other with the love, wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. That's a fragrance that you really have to learn how to wear being a child of the king. Mm -hmm. he, he gave me that. Mm -hmm. And that's what he walked in. When you think about love, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, just to ponder those things will help you live a better life. That's enough right there. Yeah. It is when you really mm -hmm. When you study look at the it, that's enough. Of, yeah, when you understand what love really means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And unconditionally. You, mm -hmm. Yes, right, because mm -hmm. God did it. Yeah. You can love, mm -hmm. and you don't have to like them. Yeah, that's tough, though. <laughs> but it's tough to be with honest the now. wisdom yeah. 
of God, mm -hmm. it'll help you do that. Yeah. And when you, you, you follow that up with the knowledge mm -hmm. that you know you have done something mm -hmm. that you regret and you want them to love you anyway. Right. You know that because mm -hmm. you've been there. And you understand that it takes time to do that. You mm -hmm. understand that because you know you had a hard time mm -hmm. getting over so-and-so did something to you. Mm -hmm. And it took you a minute to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And right. you, you, but it all, it all loops back to love. Mm -hmm. It actually does. It, every, uh, everything. So what we have to understand, and, and even as women, because I guess you can say that uh, sometimes women can have a hard time with each other. And you'll hear women say, you know, I, I, don't, I don't socialize with other sisters because it can be complicated sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I think what it sounds like you're saying is that you're helping women to get over that. Oh, yeah, you have You're to. helping them to understand who they are. And once you know who you are, first of all, in God, and you're confident in who you are in God, there's nothing else right. that, can, that can, can shatter that. It can stop you from going on and being who God has called you to be. Um, your, your, your gatherings, are, are they always, like, here in Atlanta, or do you go to other cities? Right now, it, it's, it's, it's basically in Atlanta. Okay. Now, we do have uh, QS women in other cities, and they, you know, with the technology, you can, they can Skype and FaceTime mm -hmm. and, you mm -hmm. know, on the phone and all of that kind of stuff. Right. But we're moving to have gatherings in other cities and that sort of thing. But as we learn to how to work together, mm -hmm. because the state of the world, to me, Mm -hmm. is basically because women are so stuck on being a female. They don't want to mature into a woman because we are the birthers of the world. So therefore, we are really responsible. Mm -hmm. We're the nurturers of the world. There couldn't be a human being without a, 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 a no female woman. birthing them into this place. That's the truth. So when the people look at and see the condition of the world, it's generally because of the condition of the mindset of the woman that was in an individual's life. Okay, so quickly, we have a couple of minutes left. You talked about the difference between a female and a woman. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about what it means, what's the difference in your eyes. The difference is that you know that you are not perfect and neither is anyone else. You know that God is the center of your life first of all. Mm -hmm. And that you know that he has given you charge to make this world a better place. Now, is that the woman? Yes. Okay. They've get, we've gotten given charge to do that because we're the birthers of the world. Okay. So therefore, any thing that a human being comes into this world with, mm -hmm. it comes from, the, from you because you're the carrier of them. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of emotions that you have mm -hmm. that is automatically in, in, into the bloodline of, of the spirit of that individual because you're carrying another spirit. But a spirit can attach itself. Because that's why a lot of people, you know, don't, you know, think that uh, you hang around. You know how they always tell you you hang around people, you end up being like them. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what it is. So your mindset, when you're carrying another human being in, in your womb, you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Then when that, that little human being comes out, you're the first connection to learning what life really is. Okay. So that's why, for me, it grinds my, to the end, when women use children against a man. Mm -hmm. okay. Then you're teaching the child how to manipulate and hurt other people by the, the, the affection of another human being. That's crazy. I got, you. I got mm. you. So we have about a minute and a half left. How can we find out more about yeah. your organization, um, the What's QOS that? group, right? Yes. Yeah. How can yes. we find out more about that? Well, we, you can go to the website, mm -hmm. and it's, just, it's very simple, mm -hmm. www.thequosgroup.com. Okay. Okay. We also have a Facebook page. You can go to that. And, you know, we keep that, you know, pretty up to date. But if they go to the website, they'll get a pretty good idea. And they can contact us at the QOS Group 1 
at gmail.com. Okay, gotcha. qsgroup1 one. at gmail.com. Correct. Okay, amen. Or the website. Okay. Dr. Jones, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming yes. by. and explaining. Yes, and stopping by and sharing with us. And for those that are watching mm -hmm. and you want to be connected with the Queen of Sheba group, yes. please visit their website uh, at theqosgroup.com and qosgroup1 at gmail.com. If you want to email and get more information or ask questions, I'm sure she can go into much greater detail. Oh, yes. yes Amen. This, Thank this, you this, so much. Amen. Amen. Thank, Amen. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well. Thank you. <laughs> right now, we're going to take you back to Amen. the music ministry. Minister Terrence Cotton is singing worthy. Amen. <laughs> Anybody come to give him glory? Glory. glory to yes, God. The Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Tell him thank you. Thank you for the Lamb. Thank you for the Lamb who reigns with power in his hand. Let all heaven and yes, we will. God, you have all.
Brother Terrence Cotton Ooh, singing, okay. Worthy is the Lamb. Listen, mm. let me tell you something right where you sit. Yes, God. I do not care mm. what is going on in your life right now. Thank and I you, say Jesus. that, I don't mean that I don't care, but Hallelujah. I don't care what's going on. Don't you ever allow the devil to whisper a lie in your yes, ear yes. that God is not worthy. Yes. Because one thing that I know for sure yes. is that he is worthy. Mm. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Yes. He allowed himself to be extended out yes. on that cross and they hammered nails mm. in him. And yet he rose yes. on the third day yes. to yes. give Give you new life yes. and life more abundantly. Mm. So today he's worthy. You are Hallelujah. value to the kingdom of God. Don't you ever think that you're not because God is totally 100% in control. And as you maneuver through whatever you may be going through, know that he has your best interest in heart. Mm. And I promise you, you'll come out on the on victory side. Oh, God. Amen. Amen. Mm. And amen. Amen Ooh. and amen. Ooh. You are He's victorious worthy. tonight. Yes, yes. Yes, you are. Yes. Tell your son and your daughter that they are victorious, yes. not to quit, not to give up. Yes. Tell your husband tonight, wife, that yes. he is victorious and God is worthy in his life. Even if he is looking for a job, God is worthy. Yes. And husband, tell your wife yes. that God is worthy and she's valued and you appreciate each other and everything you do. God gets the glory tonight. He's worthy. Amen. We're going to take you to the heartbeat of Atlanta Live. That's to the prayer room. Amen. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor James Minor of the True Christ Outreach Ministries located in Norcross, Georgia. Myself, along with others, are here in the prayer room tonight specifically to pray for your needs and the things that you need God to do in your life. We're here for the purpose that we might lift up your request to God. And the Bible declares that when we pray, if we touch and agree, then he'll be in the midst of us. So we want you to call us tonight, 770-300-9828, and let us see the works of God in your life. Maybe tonight you need to make an important decision. That decision is that you want to be a part of the body of Christ and live in the kingdom of God. That's a very simple process. The Bible declares that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you can believe that tonight, the spirit of the living God will come into your life and give you that salvation and allow you to live a life. Now call us tonight, 770-300-9828. Let us pray with you. Let us pray for you that you might be able to see the works of God and see the manifestation. You're not alone in this thing. The phones are ringing tonight with others just as you are. So you're not out by yourself. There are other people with the same problems, same situations. God wants to heal your body. God wants to take care of you. Call us 770-300-9828 and let's watch God do amazing things in your life. This is God's world. We are God's people. Their prayer council is waiting on you tonight to pray with you and for you. Maybe you just need somebody to talk to. They're here for you, that you might be able to have somebody to plead your case to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's waiting on us. He's waiting on you. 770-300-9828. And let's see the works of our Heavenly Father dealing with your life. I believe God will bless you. I believe he'll do it. Now, let's do this. Let's pray and watch God. Now let's go back to our music set. 
Amen. Thank you. For, thank you. God bless you and thank you for joining us. Listen, our prayer partners are waiting for you to call. Again, the number at the bottom of the screen, 770-300-9828 is the number to call. And right now I'm here with uh, one of our musical guests singing the heaven down. <laughs> my friend and my brother Terrence Cotton, thank you for joining us. And uh, it's been a minute. It has. You've had a great journey. I have had an amazing journey. You know, God is doing some miraculous things in your life. Yes, Talk he to is. us a little bit about how God has really equipped you in this season through your journey. Whew, man, I, I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, I've gone through quite a few things mm -hmm. um, to get this project out that I have out called Terrence Cotton Live in Atlanta. Um, we recorded it maybe four, four years ago and um, thought it was going to come right out. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of that, I got sick mm -hmm. and um, kidneys fell. Wow. And had to go on dialysis. Wow. wow. And I was like, God, I know you didn't bring me this far to get a CD out and then have to have to turn around and go on dialysis. I mm -hmm. can't travel like that. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you how good God is. Yes, yes. I have been able, I've traveled more on dialysis. Thank you, Jesus. Than I've traveled <laughs> with kidneys working full. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And um, so I'm still doing that right now, but um, I have a donor. Mm -hmm. So um, God did that in the service. One Sunday morning, a lady came to me and told me God woke her up at 5 o'clock in the morning and told her to give me one of her kidneys. Wow. And so I didn't let it, and, and I thank God for that because even when I got the news and my kidneys had failed, I didn't stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was like God said, as long as you keep doing my work, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm. And Amen. It's, Amen. Been a, it's been a journey, but, yeah. Yeah. But, but God is still good and I still give him all the praise. Isn't it amazing? to where God is always going to show you at some time that he's God, that you can't outbeat me for nothing because I created everything. I knew you were going to go through this. I just want to see how you're going to react. Yes. You know? Yes. And, as, and, and when I go to, it's amazing, when I go to my clinic, I go on Monday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. When I walk in there, it's almost like the other patients in there, it's like they live through me. Mm. When I come, they want to know everything that happened because I'm, I, I'm still able to do some things that they're not able to do. Okay. You okay. know, um, and I share with them, I sing to them. Mm. So, you know, you have to be kind of careful when you say, God, use me. Yes. <laughs> say that. You have to, you don't know how he's going to use you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I said, yes. Yeah. So I go in there, I sing to them. We talk about the Bible and, um, it's been an experience. But it's been a blessing it's to you. It's been a blessing to me. It's been a blessing to me. And you wouldn't be able to go to the next journey that God has called you to until you went through this. That's correct. Through this valley. That's correct. Going to the next mountain. That's correct. Yeah. So the project is out. You said you traveled more on dialysis. Travel more on dialysis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, God has really been faithful. He's yeah. been faithful. Um, and... Um, <sighs> Either one way or the other, I'm gonna be healed. Yes. Yeah. Well, whether man. whether whether my kidneys start back working on their own or whether this donor that we have uh, checks out, either way it goes, God is gonna heal me. Amen. And, and, and I believe. And God. the way that you're singing would never know that <laughs> uh, you're, you're you're on dialysis and you're waiting for it. So you went today. Yes. Wow. Yes. I yeah. praise God yeah. for you. And, and I, I listen. I go. I go. Get on the machine, sit on there for four hours and 15 minutes. Mm. Sometime leave there and go to the gym. It's unheard of. Mm. Wow. It's unheard of. But, I, God. I, I, but God. But God. But God. Wow. But God. I've, I was 315 pounds. I've lost um, down to 200. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a blessing. Wow. And, and cool. <laughs> you say it's been a blessing. It's if something blessing. didn't happen, you might have still been at 315 pounds. Right, because the things the things that I had that knocked my kidneys out, I don't have no more. Mm. I don't have diabetes anymore. I don't have high blood pressure anymore. What you I say? I don't even take any medicine anymore. Wow. Mm. It don't oh, make no God. sense. It doesn't. But it makes sense to God. It, yeah, it makes, makes sense, sense to the believer. It makes sense, yes. To yes. know that God is there. Yes. And yes. it makes sense because he needed you to be in that dialysis room yeah. So you can minister to the people that probably didn't have no one to minister to them. Yeah. So uh, you're walking in your calling. Walking in my calling. You're walking in your yes, calling. Sir. So 
I can't even ask you what do you expect God to do because he's already doing it. He's and already, he's doing so much more. Yeah, he's doing so much more. What would you say to somebody who's going through dialysis right now? Somebody may be watching that is going through some problems yeah. with their kidney. What would you say? No matter what it looks like, still believe God. Mm. Still believe God. Amen. No matter what they say, still believe God. Amen. Because he can turn it around. Yes. I have, I, I, I have seen it myself. I have seen people come to dialysis and they tell them that your kidneys have started back working. You don't have to come back anymore. Mm. Amen. So believe God, no matter what the report looks like, believe yeah. God. Because we know he's the ultimate physician. He's the ultimate the physician. The chief physician. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no matter what the doctors say. No matter what he say. He's still a healer. He's still a healer. He's still a miracle worker. Still a business. miracle worker. He is still who he said he was in the yes, beginning, sir. in the middle, and in the end. He will yes. always be the same. Yes, yes, Ooh, yes, yes. my God. Yes. How can we find out more about your new project and about you and uh, the ministry? A, of course, I'm on all of, um, all of um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, Terrence Cotton, that's T-E-R-R-E-N-C-E, -E, okay. Cotton, C-O-T-T-O-N. And um, I'm on Instagram, The Real Terrence Cotton, and you can find me there. Okay, okay. Email address if someone say, I may want you to minister or something, how do they get in touch okay. with you through Facebook or do you have a website or email? Um, they, can, they, can, um, he, they can contact me through Facebook or they can contact me on booking T Cotton okay. at gmail.com. Okay. So the new project is out. Yes. What are the expectations? Because you're going through so much, do you have any expectations for this project? That God is going to take it to the masses. Amen. That he's going to take it to the world. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's good. Yes, sir. That's good. Yes, sir. So uh, we have a couple of minutes left. With this new project mm -hmm. and with everything that you're doing and still family man and all of yeah. that, where do you find the time for Terrence? In the morning times, mm -hmm. in the morning times. Um, when, I, uh, when I get up, um, I, you know, of course, have my time with God and then, I, you know, just kind of have my time. And also, if I'm walking the trails or if I'm exercising, you know, trying to get this earthly temple, mm -hmm. you know, together. I, I yeah. got you. So That's the one what, key thing that I hear now is that You've changed your regiment, so you got to do exercise. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got you to gotta do your part. Got to do your part. You got to do your part. Gotta you got to do, do your part. part. That's good. Yes, That's good. you got to do your part. What's the name of the project again? Terrence Cotton Live in Atlanta, produced by Derek Stevenson. Okay, all right. And um, have some wonderful guest um, people on there. I got Lowell Pye from Men of Standard. Mm -hmm. um, I have Lillian Lloyd from um, the Ricky Dillard um, Choir. And... Um, David Walker in High Praise, Kevin Lemons in Higher Calling on Background. It's, it's an awesome project. Amen. God has been faithful. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's God good. has been faithful. Um, I want to thank you for joining us uh, this evening. Um, greatly appreciated and learning some more things that, uh, that you're dealing with, but God mm -hmm. is blessing you through all of it. Yes. And we're so excited that God is, has not yet forgotten about what you're doing yes. and what you're called for him to and do. And thank you all for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, baby. You know, I'm, I'm just blessed to hear his ministry and to hear what God is doing. Listen, no matter what you're going through, God is still there for you as well. You've heard it here from Terrence Cotton, and he's coming to let you know right now that God is standing by. We're taking you back to the music set with Terrence Cotton singing God is standing by. Come on, put your hands together. Everywhere you go, there is trouble. Jesus, he'll be right there. Yes, you. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Right. I'm going to mm -hmm, be yeah. standing by. Anyway. I just want you to remember that. Yes. My God, my God. Ooh. Terrence Cotton has blessed us this evening as God is blessing his life. Yes. That was a testimony right Amen. there. Somebody Amen. at home ought to be encouraged right now. Hallelujah. You ought to be because if God can do it for him, he'll do it for you. He's no respecter of person. Hallelujah. Amen. God, you got the same playing field. We all got the same. Yes, yes, yes Lord. Yes, 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 I have yes, to go on yes. to the yes. next guest. The My next God, guest. this young lady right here. Yeah, she's a, a nice My young lady. God, she go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, God is, I'm telling you, get ready. Yeah. Okay, yes. so now, if you're already a pastor, yeah. I need you to get your pen and your paper. If you are a, a person and you, God has called you, to plan a church, but you need just to know a little bit more that fear, well, she's going to share some things with you that's going to help you. She's going to let you know where you can go to get the help that you need. Amen. God has called her. Her mission is to identify, encourage, and develop leaders mm -hmm. for the body of Christ. She is also an organizational and leadership, hear me good, master coach. Mm. She assists church planters and existing pastors. Reverend Courtney Wright is here with us tonight, and she's going to talk to you about CAP. Amen. Reverend Wright, God bless you amen. this evening. Good God to be is here. standing by, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yes, yes. he's standing by because you're getting ready to educate. Educate. God, yeah. God's people, let them know what they need, the foundations that yeah. they need and, the, and when, we, when it comes to church planting. Okay. So if you would, talk to us a little bit about who Reverend Courtney Wright is and what CAP is. Okay. Well, I am the chief support officer yes. for Christian Alliance, Christian Alliance of Pastors, which is what CAP stands for, mm -hmm. Christian Alliance of Pastors. And it is the apostolic arm of Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Okay. And so what we do is we support existing pastors, as you pointed out, mm -hmm. as well as we help people who are wanting to plant a church plant well. Mm. Amen. It's one thing to plant. It's something else to plant well. Amen. Amen. So, so that's what we do. Amen. 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 How, um, and, and most people will say plant churches. Right, right. What do you mean plant a church? That several people know what it is. But some just aren't familiar with it. Well, we're talking about the process that a person would go through in order to get a church up and running. Okay. From the time it's an idea and a calling, from the time God puts his hand on a, on a person and says, I've called you to pastor, mm -hmm. normally he will then say where that is, mm -hmm. right? There's a city that's identified, there's a people, there's a community mm -hmm. that's identified. So then what happens after that? Then it's the process that they go through. Right in order to get that church up and running. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what the planting process is. Normally, for us, that takes about 18 to 24 months. Really? Yeah. What's proven is that from, from the time that God burst that desire mm -hmm. in a potential pastor, mm -hmm. if they don't plant within that 18 to 24 month period, 90% of the time, they will never plant. Wow. wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, so there is that window uh -oh. of opportunity because what happens is the enemy comes and steals that seed mm. and takes it away. And then things start happening. You know, life starts happening right. and, and the enemy gets real busy. So that's why from the time God puts his hand on them and says, do this, it's, it's real important that, that they begin a process of mm -hmm. some sort and moving toward getting that church up and running. It's interesting you say that because it's not about just, you know, God called me to preach. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if I can get this school and use their auditorium and get a couple of friends right. and then maybe their friends mm -hmm. will come too. 
Right. It's much more than that. It, it's it's a lot more than mm -hmm. that. And, okay. th and that's why we come alongside at CAP, we come alongside that person and we walk out that 18 to 24 month journey with them, helping them and, and we have what we did prior to, to launching CAP was we went out into the marketplace and we looked for about almost, for about three and a half years. Okay. We looked at what was happening in that space called church planting. And so what we did then was we looked at, we took the best, all of the best processes that we could find in those spaces and pulled them together and created our own proprietary church planting process that represents the best of the best. Mm. And, and so we, we like to think we've got something pretty special. Okay. So, so with, with that, we walk alongside them because you're right, there are hundreds and hundreds of items on a list that they would have to check off to say done, done. For example, uh, they might want to get a 501c3, right? Mm -hmm. That process alone can take 12 to 18 months. Right. From, right. from the time they begin that process. And we have organizations that we partner with mm -hmm. uh, in order to help them do that. Mm -hmm. And so, so it helps the process go a little bit smoother than perhaps if they tried to do it on their own. Yeah. And also can be more cost effective if, if they will partner with some of the folks that we've already vetted Mm. And we know we'll do a good job for them right. yeah. so they don't have to learn lessons the hard way yes. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cuts the searching down for it them It cuts as the well. searching down, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. A process that would normally probably take them three to four years, we can help them get through that process in about the 18 to 24 month period. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how do you identify that existing pastor? Is it because they reach out to you or is it because someone may notice, you know what, I think they may be struggling in just a little area and, and they are, are they referred? How? How yeah. do they go I, I mentioned earlier that this is Bishop Dale Bronner's organization. So right. Bishop Bronner has pastors who are reaching out to him all the time. Okay. And it has to do with the excellence of ministry that he walks in. Yes. And, and so as a result of that, normally we have uh, a catalog, <laughs> so to speak, of uh, uh, lots and lots of pastors that, right. that come alongside Bishop Bronner and are willing to listen to him. As a matter of fact, we give away many things. For example, we have a session, a free session coming up in April for existing pastors mm -hmm. where Bishop Bronner is going to pour into them, give them free lunch, they and their spouses. Wow. Okay. So there aren't many organizations where you go and you get free. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Absolutely. But we, we have this organization pours into uh, into pastors as well as into church planners. Now, not everything is free. Right. But this particular session is free. But where we find them is usually they find us. OK. Uh, okay. We do marketing, of course. Uh, but what we're very clear about is that God will bring those around us that um, that he has called to us. Exactly. So CAP is actually for any pastor in need. It is for any pastor. OK. Yes. Okay. For any pastor that that will that will allow us to come alongside them. Yeah, existing pastor as well as that person who is thinking about planting that church or okay. starting a church. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we have really have three verticals. Uh, one is for existing pastors. To, we call that the church builder platform, which okay. is where we pour into existing pastors. Then there's also the church planting vertical, which is for those that, that say they have a burning desire to plant a church. And then we have an, a function called the restoration and respite center. And that is a pastor has a moral, ethical, or theological failure. If they're mm -hmm. a member of CAP, we will surround them and take them through a restoration process and restore wow. them back to the body. Wow. That's okay. so critical because Life happens. Life happens. And, and, and being a pastor is not easy. That's correct. And, you know, people will look, oh, he's a pastor and something happened. But how many people are out there restoring pastors when they've fallen or they're going through something? I can tell you, not many. Yeah. Right. Because when we did the research early on to find it, because initially we said, well, let's just find an organization that we can come alongside and partner with. And there were very few mm -hmm. that we could find. Um, we found several that were uh, out in the Midwest someplace, up on a mountain, where, you know, it's so funny because what, what we saw was it said, if you have heart problems wow. or that kind of thing, you might not want to come up here because the air is very thin <laughs> and that type of thing. So, so uh, wow. but there weren't, there weren't many that we could find. Wow. And, and so uh, we created, um, we have a process, we have, we have folks that, that we assemble mm -hmm. when the need is there. Mm -hmm. And we treat the folks, spirit, soul, and body. That's so important. Yes. Um, as, could you say something to pastors who, you know, because sometimes as pastors, pride may set in. Mm -hmm. 
um, fear may set in. Right. And insecurity may set in to where it's like, I don't want my body to see I'm struggling or I'm failing. Yeah. What would you say to that pastor? Uh, I would say um, be honest with God first. Mm -hmm. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with God. Mm -hmm. If you're married, be honest with your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. And then reach out for assistance, reach out for help. Mm -hmm. You know, if they reach out to us, you know, we will do everything in our power to help mm -hmm. uh, in whatever way we can. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, uh, again, how, how long has CAP been in existence? Well, CAP was started in 2012. Okay. And again, we didn't do anything until we did, like I said, that three and a half years of research mm -hmm. to find out what the best practices were in the marketplace mm -hmm. as far as uh, the spaces that we just talked about, those three verticals. Mm -hmm. And so we've really kind of been live since about 2016 or so and, uh, and, and, and really moving forward. Uh, we've done things like we do every year, our capacity conference mm -hmm. that we do for, uh, for pastors and leaders. Um, so, you know, those are just some of the things that came out of CAP. We do conferences. Uh, we do one- and two-day workshops. We have workshops for existing pastors that can help them retool their ministries. Mm -hmm. we, have an, we have one coming up in April, and all they have to do is go to our website to see that uh, called CAP Retool, mm -hmm. where they come in and uh, we walk them through a process and have them begin to look under the hood, so to speak, mm -hmm. of what's ex really happening in their ministries. Mm -hmm. And then they have to decide whether, you know, what they do with that information as far or is how they then can retool their ministries and perhaps do some things differently to help it uh, to help it work better. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good. So tell us, what trends are you seeing in the church today? Well, this is an interesting thing. When it comes to church planting, there's research that's been done um, by LifeWay Research, which, which really is a research arm for the Southern Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are one of the foremost uh, research arms out there on the church. Mm -hmm. And, and one of the things that Life we looked at, and they did this particular study for uh, the Exponential Conference, which is the largest gathering of church planters in the world, and uh, which meets in Orlando, Florida every year. And, and, um, and they did this research for them, and they looked at what churches, how many, what percentage of churches are actually sending churches? Mm. How many are actually growing up leaders and sending them out mm -hmm. to actually grow the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. And, and the results were astonishing. First of all, uh, about 4% of churches have any sort of church planting strategy, only 4% in the United States. Wow. wow. And less than 1% actually has an, a real thriving type of church planting process. Mm -hmm. And when you look at what Jesus wanted us to do, when you look mm -hmm. at the model that was laid for us in the book of Acts, mm -hmm. Uh, we're behind. As a matter of fact, a little known fact is that right now in the United States, we have 50% less churches now than we had 100 years ago. Wow. Mm. Wow. 4,000 churches fail every year. Mm. How many? 4,000. That's a wow. lot. And now there is church planting going on. There, there are churches that are opening, but about 4,100 open every year. That's based on uh, LifeWay research as well. About 4,100. So you said, well, well, you know, we're ahead of it. We're ahead of it. It looks like we're ahead because there's 100 more. Yeah. However, when you look at population growth, population growth is growing at about 0.7 percent, so a little bit less than a percentage point, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that means that at least about 2 million people are being added every year, which means wow. we're falling behind every year. Every year. Wow. Every year. Every year. Wow. And so we in the United States, you know, the United States has become a mission field. Mm -hmm. You now have churches from other countries and other Come continents mm -hmm. coming and planting churches in the United States. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. So we as the church in the United States have to do something different in order to just reach the people in our own country. Mm. Wow. That's something. That's wow. good. We've got about 30 seconds left. I wish That's we had it. more time. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Wait, I'm telling you. Wait. She, she got into it. She yeah. got into it. I know. Roll it. <laughs> She's rolling. Please wow. let the existing pastors and those interested in starting, starting churches know how they can reach CAP. Absolutely. Well, they can reach us on our website, okay. which is, of course, www.capchurches.org. Okay. So that's capchurches.org. We're on Facebook, Twitter, all that. It's capchurches, at capchurches. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we, you can email us at info at capchurches.org. Okay. And um, 
and that's probably the best way. When they get to the website, everything they need to know, our phone number, our address, everything is out there. We have a location that is, is a wonderful location where pastors can come and just be. They can just come and hang out with, with it, you wow. know, and, and be able to get away from family, from whatever, just to kind of come and be. We have a study hall that they can sit in. Yes. Oh, we have an area where they can come sit, have a cup of coffee, and just chill out, just to be away, just spend some time alone uh -huh. or with other pastors. So uh -huh. we invite them to come. Amen. So, One Amen. more time, the website again. It's www.capchurches.org. Capchurches.org. Amen. Amen. Wow. Well, we thank, thank you so you, much Reverend for Wright. joining us, and yes. thank you, it's, it's Reverend Wright, for joining us. Hope that come again. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Listen, guys, we love you guys so very, very much. Right here, we are educational. Inspirational. And we are community. Amen. God bless you. Welcome back to Atlanta Live. Glad that you're here and you're joining us. Of course, I'm one of the hosts, James Howard. My wife, Regina, is over, um, sitting over there just <laughs> watching us and having fun and stuff. <laughs> We're better known as the sweethearts of the industry. You can find out more about us at A Sound Voice. That's our social media, A Sound Voice, and we can find out more about that as well. I'm here with my friend and my sister. We go back, way back. Way back. Way back. <laughs> uh, she has a new project out, uh, and she's doing some things different in her music ministry. I'm glad to be welcoming to the show, Monica Lisa Stevenson, how you doing? Hi there. Good to see you. Good to see you too. And uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. Good, good, to, good to hear, good I'm to hear. I'm doing great. Good to see you, you know, a little bit under the weather. I know that you recently had some surgery and mm -hmm. God is doing his part in healing you. And yes. You listening to the doctor? Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> 98 point. 98 know. point? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> so the new project that's out, mm -hmm. you changed a little bit. You're, you're expanding and doing something different. Doing something a little How different. How did you come about that? Well, K Notes, which means new and different, fresh, mm -hmm. um, is an acoustic project that we did. Uh, actually, I don't know, we were riding one day, and I told my husband, I said, we were listening to a song that uh, Bishop J.D. Means had written, and I said, oh, I want to hear that song in acoustic guitar. And he was um, like, I didn't know you'd like acoustic. I was like, yes, I love it. Mm -hmm. So I went away for a weekend, this is the honest truth. I told him about that song. I came back, I had about seven songs wow. lined up in acoustic, ready for me to record. Wow. So, and we want to do something different, and, and it has been a blessing. Okay. It's been a blessing. And him saying, you really want to do that, because I know yeah. you, you like old school. <laughs> I'm old school, and, girl. And quartet. Yeah. And so you're going to come back and do something acoustic. So how challenging was it? 
because you can get set in your ways in music and, and you're in a mold or in a tradition and then you have to break that. Yes. So how? It, it, it was a little challenging um, because, you know, when you're, when we're singing gospel, you know, we I like to go just straight to church. Right, so, right. So for me to have to um, switch it up mm -hmm. and I had to learn how to um, do the acoustic without um, being so forceful and just, just letting the, the ministry and the worship just come, yeah. you know, as it flows. Yeah. Worship is different from churching. Yes. And so I see you, that you've learned that. <laughs> oh, then, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so how did you come up with the name? Actually, I didn't come up with the name. It was about 3 a.m. one morning. Mm -hmm. I'm asleep, and my husband comes upstairs. And he said, hey, listen, the Lord has given me the title of the album. And I was like, what is it? He said, K knows. I said, K what? <laughs> what? What does that mean? Right. Um, so of course he, he said, I'm going to send it to you. So he sent it to me and we read up on it and it was, and it, it fit because it was something new, something different and something fresh than what I've ever done. You know, I, everybody knows me as the, just go to church, Monica Lisa Stevenson. So for me to do something, um, and you know, in this magnitude, it was, it was a blessing. Are you, are you thinking about doing something further? Will you be able to expand do you like it first you have to like something yeah. to continue to do yes it. we're going to be doing something a little different with it later on this year okay this is my 20th year uh in music ministry so we're going to celebrate doing something with kano's 20 years 20 years it doesn't seem like you've been singing for 20 I years no it's only like look 21 that's so, right that's yeah. right and you just had a son that got married huh yes congratulations i'm to your a son. mother in love a mother in love <laughs> how about that yeah wow yeah don't look a day over 21 hallelujah that's right. that's he's, he's a good it. guy <laughs> <laughs> what do you want Kanos to do in this season? Well, I want Kanos to reach those people who may not um, go to church that okay, you know, right. you know, as often as some of us do. And I wanted to be able to reach those people. And um, so we've been doing a lot of corporate events and a lot of um, uh, outside events where mm -hmm. there's mixed culture of people uh, who who worship God in different ways, who okay. just want to enjoy Jesus, but they don't want all of the all of the the, the hard gospel okay. as we say the hard gospel the hard gospel but you can give them hard gospel i can give them that <laughs> How they got that's my it? first line amen yes amen. well she's coming right here to sing right there please welcome monica lisa stevenson yes, sir. If I climb the highest mountain, mountain, if I try the lowest valley, yes, if I sail hmm, across the seven seas, I won't fear because you'll be there. Right there with me. Mm -hmm. I'll testify of his goodness wherever he needs me to. I'll tell how we live and die for our sins and how he rose to. If I have to walk alone, along on my journey. Right there with me. I've never seen, I've never seen the righteous for same kind. I don't just 
serving, he's right there with me. to introduce our next guest. She's a trailblazer. She's an American gospel singer, a songwriter, an author, radio personality. You've heard her all over Atlanta, a Christian R&B recording artist. Welcome back to Atlanta Live. Well, Darlene. thank you. Darlene. Thank you. Darlene, what's been going on? Well, listen, I've just been so busy, it seems like, just um, launching, you know, a new record label with my new single okay. even me coming off of the of the label um and of course growing with the radio community you know it's um, nationally syndicated in mm -hmm. 24 cities um on the nightly spirit at night and then on the weekend okay. i have the top 15 in about 26 cities that is awesome so, yes wow yes. so you are a trailblazer yeah i suppose <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i'm just working hard <laughs> yeah working hard so tell us what else you're doing well um, well if that's not enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when do you sleep? Listen, I know, right? Being a great grandmother to my first uh, wait grandson. Wait a minute, what? Yes, I have a, a great. Uh, no, a great. Oh, I was going to say you being too. Great you, you, being I was a grandmother. Say, yes, let's get that right. Okay, yes, I was going to say you too. Great. Yeah, you too young. Being, okay. Yes, so it's very young. For okay. That. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. but being you know great at being a grandmother, I'm um, enjoying my kids. I have a son as well that is um, that's going to be releasing music on mm -hmm. our, our our new label, of course. Still mm -hmm. still mom of the seventeen year old and the twenty seven year old. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, um, how long have you been in radio? Um, about, I think it's been about eight years, going on nine years. Okay. How did, you, you, how did you, um, stumble up on that? Yeah, it's so definitely a stumble up. It's, <laughs> it's not, not something that I was, um, I was totally not looking to do radio at all. But, um, you know, <coughs> as, as an artist, um, I was, my, my songs were coming up on the R&B charts, but mm -hmm. they were all mm -hmm. gospel songs. And mm -hmm. I did this uh, concert here in Atlanta and the program director for the gospel station and the R&B station is the same person. Okay. So right. when I did the concert, he was like, hey, I want to have a talk with you about radio. And it, you know, that that's where my start came from. And it just kind of, you know, elevate it from there. Okay, okay that's awesome. Because yeah. well, he'll do it. Put you yeah, in we'll these different do it. And okay. if you let him, though, that's yes. the thing. There's a lot of people that will um, get off the course, course and not know that God is leading you in this direction for a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to be able to yield. Yeah, to and the I purpose of God. be flexible. Because sometimes we have these great ideas that mm -hmm. we want to do and we mm -hmm. kind of put, 
you know, we That's try right. to box God out. Yeah, I totally then, did that. Mm. That's, I totally <laughs> tried to do that and tell God, no, I'm an artist. But um, I'm really excited about, um, and I really feel like I just got started in radio, you know, although it's kind of elevated from the midday position mm -hmm. um, to a nationally syndicated show now to two nationally syndicated shows. So we, I'll just say the sky's the limit. Don't know what's next. We're just going to see what God does. What an awesome platform. Yes. What an awesome platform. Yeah. My an goodness. An awesome opportunity. What an awesome opportunity and platform. So when did you first realize that you could sing? Cause I've been singing all my life. Okay. Really. Um, I'm, I'm raised in a family of, of, of church folk and singers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pastors and okay. preachers. So, you so I'm just, I'm raised and born and raised in it. Yeah. That's okay. just, you know, I've always done it since I was a four year old. Okay. So. And you write your own music? Yes, I do. Well, I write my own songs. I write no, my own okay, lyrics. So I'm, okay. I'm learning how to write more the, of my music. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And who influences your music? It depends. Life, okay. life influences my music. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, as um, as a minister, sometimes there are things that I can't quite put into words that'll fit in the little small time that I have on radio. Mm -hmm. And I'll just have a moment, a compelling moment, past Instagram, past Twitter, mm -hmm. um, and those are just, you know, lifetimes that I just write. Okay, so, and you just you know, start. Yeah. When sometimes if I just hear a song, I'll just record it in my phone and. And it just comes out like that. So oh, amazing. Yeah. And you've worked with some um, giants such as Tyler Perry and so many other great. Hey, tell us about that, yeah. a little bit about that. Well, listen, this Tyler Perry situation was was unexpected as well, and this is why I just say the Lord orders my steps. Um, mm -hmm. He allowed me to have my song on the um, the soundtrack of Ty the of Diary of a Mad Black Woman. That was okay. like his first film. That was okay. so many years ago. Yeah, but it I, was I just it mm -hmm. but it was just such an honor, you know, to to allow me to have that opportunity. Okay. So it was good. Right. And you had mentioned about your music. So what message um, like are you trying to leave with your audience or your list like like our viewers? What message would you, you leave through your music? Well through my music, <laughs> first of all, um, I really write from the heart um, I just want people to understand that the kingdom of God has expanded. Mm -hmm. um, understand that God is everywhere. And when I say everywhere, we can't limit him to our finite mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. of him mm -hmm. within our four walls. Mm -hmm. and, and the four walls is just a mentality. It's not just your church, mm -hmm. but understand that there is so much for us to discover. Mm -hmm. about God and and there are so many ways to love God and so mm -hmm. many places to be seen um, with the with the spirit of God in us mm -hmm. and that's that's it that's you know I just want people to free themselves mm -hmm. into their authenticity so that the light of God can shine through mm -hmm. them wherever he's called them to be you know, when I was in um, Bible college, we had to do a paper on, I know this is going to sound crazy, but and you were talking about God is everywhere and mm -hmm. we can see him in all things. We had to do a paper on the Lion King and we were mm -hmm. sitting in class like, well, are you crazy? <laughs> but, you know, the instructor said, want you to pray about it. And so when we watched it after praying, there was so, it was so many um, good things in there that we were able to write, you know, That's spiritual right. things. So you write and right. we were right. We tend to, to limit God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So what is your greatest inspiration uh, my greatest inspiration I don't even know how to answer that question okay because it's so and it's because it's so vast mm -hmm. I am inspired by a lot of different things mm -hmm. um, and I think that you know living a life that you are aware mm -hmm. um, um, having an awareness of God mm -hmm. and not being afraid being confident and bold mm -hmm. um, about being inspired mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and aware um, it's a very great place to be because it's limitless. Mm -hmm. um, you you have limitless access to God. Mm -hmm. You have limit. God has limited limited access to the earth, if you're not afraid to walk and be, you know, a conduit for Him. So yeah. you know. So I can't say that I don't. I can't say that any one thing is my greatest inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that I am honored to be inspirational. All right. In a time like I'm this. I'm telling you, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's speak on the times. Yeah. Like, just, let's speak on that a yeah. little bit, what's going on. Well, in times like these, mm -hmm. you know, like we, when I grew up, we need a savior, we need an anchor, mm -hmm. but we gotta be very sure our anchor holds. Let me tell you this, we are in some dark times and we have to make sure that we're choosing to hear from God and walk mm -hmm. and, and really walking by the Holy Spirit, not just walking by um, just 
a taught word only mm -hmm. and just what I understand only, but we really have to be endowed with the spirit of God at a time like this because people are really, really hurting right they now. They are. People are really hopeless. They don't see the light of day. They feel like, oh my God, if this, you know, if the government is not going to get us past here, what, what else is there left for me? The people are committing suicide left I and know. right. And, and we have to be humble, of, humble enough to know that the spirit of God within us is the answer. Absolutely. And we don't have to have the answer, but we have to be it. Mm -hmm. We have to be it in the things that we do and the things that we say. We got to be real about it, you know? And um, in times like these, it's the best time for, for the people of God. It's yes, the best for time our for Christians. to shine. Yes, yes, it is the best time for us to be unified. It's the best time for us to be together. And it's the best time, you know, for us to show that God is real. Yes, he is. I know I, you know, I stay on my knees a whole lot more now I during know. this time because we have to. You have, we to. have to. And we have to stay connected. Mm. So you have a passion. Tell us about this passion. Um, yes. Yeah, you got well, I have, I have a 501c3 called Mobs, Mothers of Black Sons. Okay. But we are coupling with a shelter here in Atlanta. Okay. And the shelter has been closed for several months at this point because they haven't had the funding. So we are doing a fundraiser starting on March, on March the 1st. Okay. Um, to open the shelter. Okay. And it's called That's Sheltering good. Grace. Sheltering. Not Sheltering Arms. Sheltering Shel Grace. Okay. I said okay. Sheltering Arms, but Sheltering Shel Grace. Okay. Uh, but we, you know, and a few of the celebrities from the gospel community, we're going to come together and raise the money to open up the shelter. Awesome. And it's for um, homeless, pregnant, single mothers. Awesome. That is so needed. That oh my God, so we have needed. no idea. You know, every night that we go to sleep, at least 12 women have called trying to get somewhere to sleep. Oh, so wow. we are going to make sure that before the spring hits, we're going to have that shelter open. Amen. We're going to have I'm an agreement with you. Thank you. So tell us about your latest single. Even me. Even so me. That's the name of it's it. It's even me. Okay. It's um, I'm I'm very excited about the single. Right. You know, people hear it and they they groove to it and they're dancing it's to that it. Kind of a cat that it's little... kind of a yeah, something okay. you want to kind of roll the window down and ride to it. You know. Okay. But here, the message was inspired through conversations um, in. Radio, I've had an opportunity to meet so many different people from mm -hmm. your, your Fat Joes to your Mary J. Blige to your Snoop Dogs. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget talking to Snoop Dogg. And he um, he actually had just left the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. And he was like, I said, come over to my show. And he was like, you going to let me speak on your gospel show? I said, absolutely. And he said, thank you. He says, because I'm Snoop Dogg. And people don't let me tell them how much I love God on my platform, Amazing. but I appreciate you opening the door for me so that I can let God know how much I appreciate him and love him for keeping my family and, you know, and, and even me is inspired because I know how we are in the church. I, I was raised in it, mm -hmm. born and raised in it. I know that we can look at people and judge them and say, you can't know God. Well, how, why do you live like that? Well, why don't you walk away from this? You know, it's easy for you to say when you're not in their shoes. Correct. But this song speaks to the heart of that person that is in a place that maybe I don't, I don't fit the mold of what you're looking for. But even me, I hear him calling me. His spirit draws me. And his grace is still sufficient for me. Amen. And um, that, that song speaks to the heart of that person. Amen. Well, it's been awesome talking to you. But before we uh, conclude this interview, tell us how we can be, uh, reach you. Give us your social media. So. Listen, always hit me up on Instagram and Twitter, at okay. Darlene McCoy. But if you want me to come to speak to your ministry or your children or your women or whatever, hit me up at I am Darlene. Darlene.com. I am Darlene.com. It's that easy. It's that easy. Yes. It's All a, right. That's, yeah. All yeah. right. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank for you. I appreciate thank you having you. me. Thank today. you. All right. Amen. Amen. Welcome Amen. back. I want to thank Jennifer and Darlene McCoy. Even me, Lord. Even me. Ah, yes. Even, even me. me. Even me. Yes. No. Okay. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Even me. You know, I was going to try to just give you a little rendition, but I'm not going to do that tonight. Oh, okay, okay. I'm right, going right. to stay in this lane. <laughs> right, right, right. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let, I'm going to let, uh, uh, um, yeah, well, I'm going to let our musical guest, <laughs> Monica Lisa Stevenson, stay in that lane right. and, and minister to us. But listen, we want you all to know that God loves, yes, even you. Even you. There's Amen. nothing 
too hard for God. We want you to, to hold on and understand that God has everything in his hands. It says the heart of the king is in his hand. Yes. And like the water, he can turn it whichever way he pleases. And if you re realize that when you put your hand in water, you can move that water in any you direction will. you want. So if you are willing and you allow God will move you in that direction. Amen. All you have to do is turn it over to him Amen. and let him work it out. Amen. Because he always works it out. Yeah, and he's able. And God is not a respectable person. Yeah, he's able. He's going to do it. Yes, he will. He's going to do it. Hashtag won't, won't he, he do, do it. it. Hashtag yes, he won't he do it. Listen, <laughs> our prayer partners are still there. They're waiting for you to call them. The number is 770-300-9828. Yes. Or call toll-free 1-800-180-5950. And we're going to take you back to the music ministry of Monica Lisa Stevenson singing Turn, Turn It Over. Turn It Over. Snap those fingers right here. Come on. You can play your guitar if you want to. There have been problems in my life. So much misery, pain and strife. Many things that I've been Problem, man. 